Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues. And with this video, we'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 4 of the anime series, Kune Wo Amu, or The Great Passage. <laughs> and wow. Um, I didn't know how much play we were actually going to get into with this whole idea of The Great Passage. This dictionary that's in production being very close to getting the chopping block. You know, um, it's something that really set a fire under the haunches of Nishioka who has become so proactive that, you know, like it, the plans he's putting into action, he wants to try to, to garner a buzz. He wants to try to get, you know, some talk going surrounding the production of this dictionary. And it's something that it's definitely working, but not necessarily quite along the lines of how he was hoping. Um, people are seeing that he's going above and beyond. He's really putting some hard work into calling around his plan essentially is to get well-known writers involved so that the company can't just easily give it the axe. They can't just say, you know, uh, because of the financial allocation involved and, and we really got to save money, we got to cut, you know, corners here and there, we got to let this section go. We got to shut this section down. It's not going to be that easy if they get some contractual writers involved that are going to be overseeing this and, and having input into this and everything like that. So he is going, you know, nth degree, making calls, going out, hanging out for three hours with a writer who's talking about <laughs> mammal hibernation and bears and all this kind of stuff. It, it's hilarious, but it's almost as though he is being, you know, counterintuitive because he's sending up the red flags. He's sending up signals that are having people say, what is Nishioka up to? Is he is he really in the good here? Is he okay? Are we sure that he's not worried something bad might happen? It's creating the buzz. It's just not the direction of the buzz he's probably hoping <laughs> would be the case. And um, it's kind of frightening for that because to see how closely knit these characters have become, Majime is the new kid on the block and already he feels like he's found a home for himself. He feels like he's found somewhere he can be himself and, and, and be on that evolutionary process as I've touched upon in video after video discussing the series. That evolutionary process of his being a wallflower and trying to break out of that mold, it's something, you know, he feels so satisfied when he gets even the slightest glimpse of Nishioka saying, hey, this is working. What I've been doing is working for the positive, you know, he's putting the positive spin on it. He's a good PR man, you know, blowing smoke up everyone's butt. <laughs> you know, in that case, in that event. And, uh, but it's, it's allaying, you know, certain of Majime's concerns. He, he doesn't want to see this fall apart. It's something that Nishioka, you know, he, he puts so well when he said, this is a job that Majime was made for. This is the perfect scenario for him. And nobody else can really do what he does. And I really love that Nishioka, he, he, you know, he's the kind of character that I think typically you would see he would be mocking of Majime, and there's certain aspects of Majime's personality, the fact that he's a virgin and everything, that Nishioka does mock. But at the end of the day, he really appreciates the kind of person and the kind of mind Majime is and has. And that, to me, just makes this, you know, such a, a like, renowned story. I just absolutely love that Nishioka is kind of going against type and, and really being appreciative of who Majime is as a person, of what his skills are, and he even kind of envies that. I think Nishioka is one of these kinds of characters that, you know, he has well and truly a lot to learn about himself and about his own life based on interaction with a, a character like Majime, much as is the case of vice versa, where Majime needs to find a, an ability to open himself, to, to be as vocal as a character like Nishioka is, <laughs> Nishioka's kind of got the, the con artisty thing, you know, the, the car salesman kind of thing, that aesthetic in, in his character, but he yearns for more. He doesn't want his life just to be about that, you know. And we see when he's talking to his wife or his girlfriend, whoever she is, um, who's giving him words of encouragement and saying, you know, it's kind of funny. You haven't really been bitching about work <laughs> as of late. You've been enjoying your job. And it's very much because of what Majime, the, the passion Majime brought into that fold. And so I love these characters playing off each other. I love the, the you know, we're not seeing so much direct interaction, but the interactions that just being around each other is having boasts my excitement for the story. And of course, it comes down to Nishioka, you know, once again, try, trying to flag his man, trying to be the wingman. Yo, go for the girl. You know, let's take the weekend off. Ask Kaguya out. And I 
I freaking love, <laughs> I'm absolutely in love with the old lady, the old grandma, because she's wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and <laughs> she may every other direction. He thinks she's having eye problems, but she's just winking, you know, hey, go out with my granddaughter. You, you'd be perfect together. Even she wants to get them together. <laughs> no. And we see Kaguya is actually, she seems to be giving him fleeting looks every now and then where it's like, yeah, this, this is good. This is where this is going. And I, this is where I want it to go <laughs> much more. I want to see them coming together. I love that they're out for a walk and, and you know, he brings up <laughs> the grandmother's eye problems as he sees it. And the granddaughter, you know, Kaguya, she's just like, no, she's she's trying to hook us up. <laughs> you know, she knows exactly what's going on. And I love that these are two very passionate people when it comes to their employment, their work, their skills. These are career outlines for these characters, but they have so much heart and soul that they are well fitted to each other. If only we were all <laughs> so lucky to find someone so well fitted to us, you know, I, is <laughs> one of my deepest and one of everyone's deepest wishes in life. And of course they go on the Ferris wheel, which is something Kaguya brings up and, and they're talking about, it. it's odd how from far away, from certain angles, it doesn't even look like it's moving. In a way, I feel like it, they start getting into parallels and, and metaphors talking about the direction and, and, and sort of the pacing of the story. You might think you're watching this and not really much is, is being done, but it, ha it all depends on your particular perspective. You know, again, you're not seeing uh, Nishioka and Majime full on interacting, full on playing off each other in every single scene, but they're just being around each other, having so much, you know, creating leaps and bounds in the progressiveness of their own personal aspects to the story. Very similarly, you know, we've had Kaguya and Majime, they are in the same abode. They're, they're both, you know, holed up in this grandmother's place. And in spite of their being around each other, not really much momentum on the surface can be detected. But here we have them going out. Here we have them talking, conversing, getting to know each other, getting to know more about Kaguya's passion for cooking and how, you know, creating the perfect meal. You would think that is where it ends if you're looking from without. But within, she knows it's just the beginning to, to create such a meal. To put all these ingredients together, it then moves on to the person who will consume it. And it becomes a whole new, you know, sort of uh, tapestry for them to unfold. You know, this, this rhapsody of flavor and food and beauty that she constructs, that she puts all of her heart and soul into and all of her intellect into. And it's very similar, the idea of the production of and the, the choreographing of and the telegraphing of dialogue, words, their meanings, you know, putting that all together, quantifying that, for Majime, they are both cut from the same cloth in the passions they have for their particular employee. And, and you know, it, it just seems like they are so well fitted together. <laughs> I, love, I love by the end, once again, getting into that metaphor aspect, you know, do we find post credits that he missed his opportunity to get off the Ferris wheel? And I, I almost have to wonder, it was that like a metaphor for, well, he missed his opportunity to like maybe give her a kiss or something like that, act on that moment, really seize that moment, because of course he is kind of downtrodden on himself. He, he rather than continuing with the moment momentum of that particular scene from certain perspectives he dialed it back and he kind of like you know looked down at his lap again so it's that kind of you know mixed metaphor if you will that he missed his opportunity and then you have sort of Kaguya herself solidifying this is something she wants this is something she is also aspiring toward and seeking because of all those fleeting looks that she's given him throughout the episode but also she says herself, well, I hope the next time, you know, Majime will, will have the time to get off, <laughs> so to speak. And um, so, yeah, I love the heart and soul of this particular series. I love that these characters are really trying to keep the Great Passage a, a thing, you know, the flame of that thing lit. They're trying to hold so dearly onto it and make sure this is something that can come to a pseudo fruition. And I think it begs the question whether or not it will. I mean, we may see that this this whole dictionary creation process, it might come all tumbling down, but it's the growth of the characters. You know, that's only the garnish to the growth of the characters that is going on in, in the procession of trying to create this piece, whether it is ill-fated or not. And um, 
I just absolutely love it. I love Majime. I love Kaguya. I, I so desperately want to see them getting together, but I like that it's it's slow paced. It's much more to my own personal pacing as a person. You know, I'm very much about taking my time, getting to know someone before revealing certain things to them or before becoming closer to them and that kind of thing. And, you know, I'm very sort of old school individual along those lines. And so I'm very appreciative of a character who... I can say, you know, it is very closely knit to my own personality and um, ha has to go through some of the things that I found were struggles in life. Opening myself, being, you know, sort of uh, satisfied with who I was as a person. And that's the journey Majume is on. And I love the characters surrounding him on that journey. Uh, again, the fact that Nishioka really appreciates Majume for who he is and, and really kind of looks up to him. It was unexpected, pleasantly so. And it's just another great aspect to the great passage so yeah otherwise that'll be pretty much it for me on this hope this video finds you well and i'll catch you all later peace